Um, hello, I'm Thomas, and I represent the University of Otago today, as well as my own company, Sightline Junkies Limited. And I'm presenting from the AUC to the All Blacks. So, I'm going to be covering basically how I've been involved with the AUC over the years, um, how I got working with All Blacks, which is well, pretty cool. Um, then I'm going to introduce our flagship at Waterboy, Your Sport Your Way. I'm going to give the breakdown of how it all came together, all the features that are in it, and then I'm just going to detail a bit on where it's heading from now. So, a little bit about me. Um, a few years ago, this email started circulating around the department that said, there's this thing called the AUC and offering a student developer scholarship. And somewhere in there, I just came through and I saw, oh, free laptop. I like the sound of that. I don't have a MacBook. Uh, little did I know they were going to send me to WWDC and DevWorld, and I ended up at Create World as well. So, yeah, it was a pleasant surprise. Uh, AUC events, I mean, we've all been part of it. Some really bright individuals, and it's the coincidental meetings of people here and there that get you talking about something, and then somebody says, hey, would you like to do a little bit of work for me? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. So eventually I got hooked into working with Objective-C and iOS. So from then on, here I ended up. So I got contacted by a company in the Dunedin, Sideline Junkies, they had just started setting it up. And uh, they said, hey, we're looking for an iOS developer now. It's actually quite a, a lack the Robin than even, I think they're mostly in Auckland maybe. But they said, can you come in for an interview? You know, um, we're looking for somebody who can build us an app from the bottom up. And I was like, well, I've never built an app before, but yeah, I, I could be your guy. So I get there and lo and behold, there's an all black sitting there. And Carl's the only the guy I saw on TV 10 years ago. And um, yeah. Get chatting a bit. I don't think we actually talked about much regarding the app itself, but at the end they were like, when can you start? And I was like, um, tomorrow. Yeah, sure, today. And um, yeah, we've been rolling from there on since, so we are a startup company. Uh, we are the Needham based. We've got developers from all sorts of backgrounds. We've got people that are in business, you know, they're all go-getters. Uh, we've got a web developer who handles the web side of things. Uh, then of course I'm the iOS programmer and eventually I'll be an Android developer. And of course we've got three All Blacks tagging along, as well as another um, rugby player in Australia. We've had Tom Abercrombie, uh, who plays the New Zealand Breakers, do a bit of parading around for us on the app. And uh, all together we have a passion for sports business and programming. So Case Mears is uh, All Black number 977, so like I said, about 10 years ago he was uh, quite the, the, the key player. Um, he's a great guy, yeah, fun to hang out with, uh, sometimes can look a bit intimidating because he's twice my size, but you know, that, that makes good sense. And um, you might have seen Mar Nonu, I mean he's one of the key players in, uh, in New Zealand rugby. Um, and the other player that we've got on board is uh, Tamaki Ellison, who is all like number 1099, I think he's playing for Japan at the moment. So yeah, it's been really interesting hanging out with these guys and, you know, and that's my portfolio. So Waterboy is our app. Waterboy is an app that allows you to talk about local sport. We really want to place focus on the people that play the local park, you know, the grassroots, that sort of thing. With the app, you can walk up to any sports field and say, there's a game happening here right now. It can be um, Grand Brace versus Northern. Yeah, sure, they're over 35s, but you know, we, we can talk about it. And we can say, look, the game's happening here right now. And anybody on any side of the planet can go, what kind of games are happening in New Zealand right now? And just keep up with them. So it really creates a, a platform for these local teams to be shared around the world and be talked about. So at the moment we've got a, a desktop version, uh, we've got a mobile website, and we've got an iOS app. So, and like I said before, in the future we'll be rolling out an Android version. So here's a preview of what the desktop version looks like. We've got um, games happening on the left-hand side. You can filter them by current and upcoming games. Uh, in the search box, if you tap there, a big search panel comes out. You can say, I want to browse in New Zealand, in a particular range, or right around the world. You can say, I want to see what games are being played in Andorra or Antarctica. It's all possible. Um, you can create accounts with um, Facebook and Twitter and, of course, email. So, very centered. And, of course, we've got links to the App Store. And towards the bottom, not in the screenshot, plenty of links to what we are all about and that sort of thing. 
Uh, we even show a real-time feed of images, constantly not this one, because that's a professional image. Uh, the website's been built with a responsive uh, design, so if you view it on a mobile device, you get this version, which is nicely uh, cut down. Um, you got a nice big scoreboard, so in real time, you see the scores changing. People can say, oh, there was a try, and then automatically in the app, you'll see that it updates with five points. Um, it's not just restricted to rugby, for example, because it could be football, netball, beach volleyball. So far, virtually any sport that requires two teams Things that we're looking at in the future, because again, we've established a, a model that's very generic. We would like to support things like golf or tractor driving or any other sport that you could think of, even fantasy football. It should all be possible. Uh, again, the mobile site offers very similar features. Um, you can search, you've got a user profile. Now, I haven't detailed it in these screenshots because I'm going to focus more on the iOS version, but um, it's, it's relatively similar in design. So here's a few screenshots of the iOS version. We recently rolled out version two of the app. Um, we've been rolling with version one since about February in the beginning of this year, and it definitely is a big improvement in um, functionality and design so far. And I'm probably gonna detail mostly on how we got here and what I learned along the way. So when I initially joined the team, all we had was a jQuery mobile prototype. So it was a little bit clunky. Uh, we've now switched over to a responsive design, like I mentioned, so that's all taken care of. We have written our custom uh, API for syncing data, and syncing data is important because you can be anywhere on the sports field or even at home just reading along, seeing what's happened, so it's important that everything remains in sync. Um, something that we really had to learn the hard way was how do you make a sports social network app? You, you can't really go on the internet and say, please help me give this answer, because it, there is no real answer to this. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of thinking outside the box and just trying to come up with innovative solutions to some of the problems that we had with setting this whole thing up. So Waterboy has been, I'm, I'm just gonna break everything down into most of the main screens that are on the app. Uh, the first thing you'll see is the home screen. Um, this has got um, some technology behind it that figures out whether the user is logged in or not. It makes sure it redirects at the appropriate times. It will connect you to, uh, I will allow you to do browsing from the main screen. We originally had a tab-based interface, which meant that you had four screens that you had to toggle between. It wasn't really clear why everything was so separated, so now everything's been condensed into one single screen with a swipe to go back and forth between either browsing or creating an account, because that's really what's important. We want to draw the users in, they can have a little preview of what's going on, but ultimately get them to set up an account. Um, we support uh, login and uh, sign-in with Facebook, Twitter, and email. To kind of simplify that, we just have three buttons. You tap on one. If you already have an account, it will log you in. If you don't have an account yet, it will bring you up with a sign-up screen. Very simple. Um, the people that will be using this app aren't necessarily people that are very technology savvy. When you think about it, people that really enjoy sport are, well, <laughs> they don't really have much technology skills. They can be an older crowd, they can be a younger crowd. They can be parents that are trying to keep up with their children. So we need to keep things as simple and natural as possible. So this is the um, logged out browse version of the app. We have thrown some terminology around, but basically this allows you to view games. So a game, as you can see by these little scoreboards, consists of two teams that are playing. There's a score associated with each team. There's some information about the sport the location, we, you know, we, we give some more detailed information regarding what exact city it is, as well as the venue and which country it's in. It gives a little status saying full time, uh, it can be um, half time, again, and this varies from sport to sport, it can be second intermission, but that's all displayed so you can see exactly what the status is of the game. The little icons that are in green say new updates or new comments. So an update is when the person who has created this game has written an update about it. It could be just their comment, or it could be, oh, there was a try, or oh, there's a penalty, or a red card. The comments are things that are left by other users that did not create the game, they are just partaking in the conversation. What was really important with this is that we had to do real-time syncing of data, so if something updates, that change is then reflected to all devices that are participating. Um, we want to be able to um, segregate information between recent and upcoming games, so 
usually you're, you're just browsing things that happen during the day, but also you want to be able to see what's coming up, subscribe to these things and that sort of stuff. An actual game itself um, is more based on comments and the actual conversation that takes place. So each of these little cards that you see is a comment and we allow people to upload text as well as images and in the future we're going to be looking at uploading video because it would be pretty exciting if you could film a moment of action and then say that on there and then later rewatch the game or just the highlights thereof and we're not talking about the ones that you see on TV but really from the sideline you know um, and the person that's been commenting on this one is Otago Rugby team so we have um, people at Otago Rugby who are doing uh, streaming for us of these games. Um, other things you've got is you've got user profiles, so you can tap on the user profile and it will actually show you a more detailed view about the user. You can, um, you've got an information tab up there, so if you tap it, you will see information about this game. It will list who the players are, I mean, sorry, the teams, uh, what sports being played, the locations that it's being played in, uh, competition, much more detail. So we, we are providing a platform that also ties together a lot of this information that you normally wouldn't be able to get because, well, Grassroots sports, they don't really make it to the newspaper in much detail, or even Sky TV for that matter. Um, and like I said, you can share as well. So you can share these things to Facebook, Twitter, and that sort of stuff. And I'll cover more about that later. Um, and other things that you can do if you have created the stream is to manage the stream. You can delete the stream and that sort of thing. And of course, you can follow. So it's a subscription service. You say, I want to know more about this game. You tap follow. And later on, you can check back on it. It appears in your feed and that sort of stuff. So a very important aspect, obviously, is making it easy to create a game. When we first started out, we had maybe three screens that you had to go through of adding things. And refining it over and over, we found that we just want to keep it as simple as possible with as many things as possible auto-completed. So when you are presented with creating a game, the first thing we do is we already assign a sport for you. So by default, it's soccer. If you change any stream a rugby game, then the next game that you're going to be reporting about will be order set to rugby. So because usually a rugby fan will want to talk about rugby more, and a netball fan would want to talk about netball. Makes some sense. The country is derived from um, the local data of the phone. We initially had it that you had to set up a profile and specify this, but most people don't really give a crap. So. It auto-completes that for you, so it says you're in New Zealand. If you change the settings and say, I'm not in New Zealand anymore, it'll remember that from there on. The location, teams, competitions, are things that have to be completed in some sort of form. So tapping on, um, normally we'll say choose a location, will bring up with a screen where you can say, um, start typing your, your location, you type a little bit, and it will try and auto-complete it for you. If it's in the system already, um, it will just give it to you and you can just automatically put it in. So it's a very quick process to get a game up and running. Usually you come to the sideline, the event starting in 10 minutes, you really don't want to spend the next 15 minutes trying to figure out how to do this. It's, it's as simple as that. If the game doesn't exist, however, sorry, the location, the user is presented with a simple screen where they can pinpoint exactly where this is and it uses the user's location to figure out which sport field you're at. You can even use um, geocoding to just search for a location and will automatically stick a marker in there for you. You just have to give it a name, it will put it in the system and it's ready to go. The process is very similar for creating teams. We allow competitions which are actually optional and under creating a team we also allow you to uh, add a club to associate with the team. So we're giving the user all the tools they need to, for us to provide all the information about local teams, clubs, locations, sports, whatever, that can compete in our app. So it is very user-driven, and we do rely on people to go to the sidelines and report about those games for us. Um, creating a game can be accessed throughout the app. We have a very minimal screen. Like I said, it's, it's been condensed to just one, and we really feel like it improves the experience of getting people to really broadcast these things. Um, notice we've got a little clock, so you can say this is happening right now, it will autocomplete, or it will say, you can say this is happening next week, so you can plan all your games ahead. Um, a new thing that we added with version 2 was notifications. So now you get notified on when something is happening when you're away from the app. So things like somebody started following you, or somebody left a comment on your stream, or yay and boo, which is our equivalent of liking and disliking something, 
because sometimes you really want to dislike them, you know, because some people might get really rowdy about <laughs> their opinion on how the game went. So we allow people to upvote and downvote it, and you get like a little smiley face noting how happy they are. Um, other things that will remind you is that, oh, your game's about to start, please don't forget. One problem that we had was that people would start a game, the game would progress, and then they kind of forgot about it. And then the game kind of goes to an unknown stage. And ideally, we want these people to report what the final score was, and then maybe say that the game is finished and that sort of thing. So with these notifications, we are kind of enticing people to make sure you get your game done. Again, they have the freedom to choose whether to do so or not, and we can't really force it on them. So we found this is probably the best way. Uh, notifications, again, are synchronized with the server. Um, they're synchronized with your desktop app as well. And tapping on any of these notifications will bring up the appropriate screen in the app. So the app really had to be redesigned to accommodate the sort of uh, structure where you could say, oh, somebody has shared on my comment, I tap on it, and then a stream screen comes up. Or if a user has subscribed to me, I should be served with a user screen right from there in the app. So version two of the app took a really creative redesign to make sure that could happen. And these are things that you take for granted from most apps that you see, like Facebook and Pinterest and that sort of thing. But for somebody like me, who was very new to iOS programming, and there's no real tutorial that really explicitly states this, um, it was quite a new thing to get uh, you know, mastered. So you're probably wondering, how do you get paid? Um, the app is free on the App Store, and we haven't supported anything like iOS, and that is explicitly done because we find that very invasive and irritating. We instead have rolled our own in-app advertisements. So we have gone around to local clubs and local sponsors and asked, are you interested in you know, running advertisement on our app? And we offer them packages and that sort of stuff. So you notice that the advertisement at the bottom says, good luck from this place, El has the need. And so again, we got them to compete. One uh, advantage that we have for doing this personally rolled advertisement system is that we can present ads location specific. I mean, with Apple, you just get served ads and they are relatively irrelevant to the, the topic of interest. But we've got people that really like sport that are at a sports ground. Then we can say, hey, are you hungry after the game? You can go to McDonald's down the road and go get a Mac, Big Mac. And at least that's relevant, you know? Um, oh, enjoy the game. You can buy some more sports gear at Rebel Sports just down the road. And it makes a lot more sense, and we find that we're getting really good impressions out of that use, and people, because they're not invasive, are actually responding quite well to the ads. Um, we provide all the tools necessary for advertisers to get on board and create their own ads. We keep it relatively simple in the fact that we don't allow any irritating banners or images in yet. Yet. Uh, <laughs> but um, right now, tapping on an ad will redirect you to whatever place they feel um, is useful to be redirected to. Um, we have incorporated things like Facebook and Twitter to allow people to share the game and really get the word out there. Now, Twitter is actually a surprisingly active platform for sports people, especially like Otago Rugby, really broadcast all the stuff from there. We've got um, the actual people that play the sports joining in and doing some commenting, but obviously when they're not playing on the field. Um, and people really like following them, so it's, it's really good for us to get these things shared around. Normally, the model of broadcasting a sports game before Waterboy came along was you had to agree on a hashtag, then get that hashtag out there to people so that if you're on a Saturday and you're commenting, everybody has to use the appropriate hashtag. With Waterboy, we eliminate that problem because we have created some sort of a centralized place where you can now see all these games happening and all the comments that are flowing around. Our Facebook integration works with the Facebook ticker, which is that little activity log that you see on your right side of your screen. So it's not like we are spamming some of these timeline. I explicitly spam myself on this one. If you are doing any activity on Waterboy, such as writing comments or updates and that sort of stuff, it will appear in the ticker, but it won't spam your timeline. Nice. If you want to explicitly share something with people in a comment screen, you can say, I want to share this to Facebook or I want to share this to Twitter. Then that will appear on your timeline. Other people can see it. Clicking on it will take you to the app. So it's very neat and well integrated. We had to use um, Twitter reverse auth um, to get uh, a token exchange and then do all our activity towards Twitter. So it was a little bit of a hassle to set up. 
because most people are using the social frameworks and the Twitter frameworks to get Twitter sheets up. Um, we're really doing everything under the hood. So we've got tokens being sent to the server and then actions taking place in synchronization with the server. So it's complex, but it integrates very nicely. Uh, yeah, I had to use a framework for that. It's, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a handful, so that made a lot more sense. Um, we also have added a feature that allows you to share things to your um, Facebook fan page, or sorry, your page. So let's say you are some sort of a, a big club and you really want to start bringing these games out on your club page, you can do it this way. In real time, you can have comments flowing in with photos on your Facebook page and then all your Facebook fans can tag along and see it as well. And like I mentioned before, we've got login, share, activity, and comments that are being socially integrated. Bless you. Um, other things that we added, where we kind of had them before, but we've neatly integrated them into one space, is a, a user profile. So you can, with the whole follow and unfollow subscription model, you can subscribe to games, which then appear in your feed. You can subscribe to entities. So say, I want to follow an entire competition, like the FIFA World Qualifier then all these games related to that will start appearing in your feed. Uh, the games tab, on the other hand, is used to keep track of all the games that you've ever made, so that if one day you're like, oh, I need to remember where my game was, because we've got a lot of games, usually on a Saturday, just come bursting in, and then you've got like a massive list. Um, it's easy to go and rediscover the games that you've created. If you go into any game, we implicitly subscribe you to this game if you are actively engaging. So if you go and write a comment, we auto-subscribe for you so that later, if you want to find the game, it's, it'll be in your feed. And then you can manually unsubscribe and we won't irritate any further. Um, You'll notice that at the top, there's, there's three buttons, very similar to the old Facebook style before they upgrade to iOS 7. Uh, this is a persistent navigation that takes place across most screens unless you're creating a game or doing an autocomplete action. And this was done cleverly using uh, tab-based navigation and then recreating those buttons on the top. Which, surprisingly, wasn't that straightforward because, again, there's no real tutorial out there that says how you create that like that. Um, under the hood, a lot of things that I learned along the way, nobody said, if you make it something like this, you should use core data. Version 1 of the app rolled out without core data, and I'm almost ashamed to say because it was a real nightmare to work with without it. Um, I switched over to NS Fetch Results Controller to have better control over keeping things synchronized. In the app to make sure that everything runs smoothly and quickly. All tables are associated with um, the own NS Fetch Results Controller, which makes um, everything quite fast. If you're switching between a recent and upcoming game, Rather than changing the predicate and remaking the NS Fitch results controller, you're actually just toggle, like showing one table and hiding another. So you don't have to waste any time loading things back in and clearing things out like caches. It's just, it's all there in different tabs. Um, uh, map kit and core location are being used. So things like creating a, a location of any sort in the app is done with a map. You can just quickly drag along the map, choose a location, and we'll work with that. Core locations used to track the user. Now, it's not that straightforward to, you know, you're using core location and you're assuming that the operating system will make sure it's done as efficiently as possible. It's not really. It's just constantly spitting out locations for you, which just drains the battery like crazy, which was a problem for the first version. So um, I had to come up with some algorithms to make sure that it did it relatively cleverly once every five minutes or so. It just kind of does a little poll, saves the location, and occasionally updates it when really necessary. Uh, the real-time syncing with the server had to be done using our own API to make sure that things were um, as data efficient and battery life efficient as possible. So there's a lot of data that comes in through um, JSON objects which are then parsed and saved and tokens are being sent up and timestamps to make sure that everything remains in sync. And again, it's, that's an answer that's not that evidently available on the internet. Uh, like I mentioned before, we've got the Facebook and um, Twitter um, SDKs linked in so that we can do all our share actions. Um, a lot of the examples that the Facebook SDK comes with weren't necessarily applicable to our app design, so I had to come up with a lot of clever ways to make sure to integrate it correctly. And what's coming up ahead? Well, obviously we need to upgrade to iOS 7 because that just came out and 
yeah, it's lagging behind a bit. We're currently looking for uh, developers who can um, code for Android, but it's probably going to be likely that I'll have to build it myself. Joy, yeah. Um, we've already done a few partnerships with local clubs. Like I said, Otago Club Rugby is working with us. Um, we've got investment rounds happening to make sure that we get some money because in the end, we are a startup company. Uh, we've got a partnership set up with Louisiana State University, which will see us relocating to the US in the next year or so, um, where we will be working alongside EA Games from their um, business incubation program. So we are hoping to roll out through their university network because Louisiana State University is known to be really engaged in their sports. So because America is all sports crazy, um, I think we've got a pretty good chance of getting the app out there. And if you want to get a hold of the app, um, waterboyapp.com, because Waterboy was taken. Yeah. I think uh, waterboy.com is actually uh, an app for refilling those water tanks. Um, Waterboy for iOS is on the App Store, and it is free, like I mentioned before. And we are also on Facebook and Twitter if you want to see what we're up to next. And uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, yeah. I think the road ahead should be relatively interesting, and uh, I definitely look forward to see what version 3 is going to be like. Anyway, thanks, guys. So, so Tom, how, how do you uh, split the uh, malevolent How do we stop people from being malevolent? Yeah, um, we, we did realize that we're going to have a problem with people. It's, it's a relatively open place to write things. And sure, Facebook has got a bit of social pressure where you, you can't really write anything, but people here are like, oh, you guys are crap. Why'd you do that? Ref, you're terrible. We've already seen it, and we've already seen some lewd behavior. Um, we allow people to report and um, uh, comments for spam as well as for abuse. So we've got a, a system in place that will get those people's comments removed or hidden and eventually have them kicked out of the app if necessary. Yeah. Can I go back some slides? I sure can. The anvil? Wait, so. Huh? Yeah. 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 The flag. Yeah. Why are you using an Android symbol and not an It's actually a Windows symbol, isn't it? <laughs> it's an Android symbol. Is it an Android symbol? Again, I'm not an Android user. What symbols are it used for? It's the, it's the actual, so you know how the, on the on iOS the old one was the the square with the the arrow that sort of turns away. Yeah. It's yeah. the Android version. Oh uh, wait, you're talking about the share icon, not the notifications icon. Sorry, the share icon. Is that explicitly Android? Yeah. We, we, we did look around and say which one sounded the most like, you know, share. And because we're using a web version yeah. and we're eventually going to be using an Android version, we just want to go with something that was consistent. consistent. But I think because this is solely for iOS anyway, it could make sense that we use the traditional iOS share icon. They've now changed the square with this with pointing up. So. With pointing up. Okay. That's iOS 7. Um, yeah, sure. I, again, when I update to iOS 7, I'll make sure that it'll be... Very, um, one, one thing I have to point out is that when I started, the, the instructions were make it, well, what we want is make it the exact same as what our mobile version of the disk, uh, like the, the browser version is like. Yeah. As it turns out, that is really bad. Like, you, you can't say, just recreate this in iOS and it will work. It, it doesn't. And version 2 is a reflection of a lot of things being corrected. Um, yeah. So, but, but thanks for the pointer. I'll, I'll keep that icon in mind. Yeah. What, uh, what, what As in, what, sorry? You said that it's like, you know, you, you try to put the web version directly to iOS and that didn't work. Well, so, like, what, what, what challenge did you find when it hits? Um, I mean, I don't necessarily mean in the sense of I want to make a, um, you know, a web-based thing happening in iOS. It's, it's literally, you know, yeah, translating everything into iOS structure. Um, I think it was more along the lines of um, the way the things were laid out, the way that you access things. Um, the way that views are presented and that sort of stuff. We had a tab-based interface that matched the jQuery mobile implementation, and that model just did not work. Um, first of all, it took up too much screen space. It separated a lot of the information where it really shouldn't be separated. Um, we find that this design is much cleaner, much more friendly to what iOS was all about. Um, of course, we've got the use of um, iOS libraries and that sort of stuff that makes a lot more sense. Um, but yeah, just in general, this was a better way to go about it. Also, how buttons work and that sort of thing. It literally before was a clone of the mobile version, and it just did not work. Yeah.
Any more questions? And yeah. How, and how do you cope with the two? So, so it's only if you own the game that you can report the score? Exactly. So, yeah, the, so there could be two people at the, the, the grounds saying, I want, I want to broadcast this game. And the other will say, well, I want to broadcast this game. Yeah. Technically, that's allowed because somebody might want to have their own line of conversation about a game and be able to say their own things. Um, why not? Um, we do have checks in place saying this game has already been made right here with all the exact same settings. You know, so you can't recreate the exact same game yourself at the same time, but two people should be able to create the same game. Um, because we've separated things into upcoming and recent, it's very quick for you to see whether a game already exists or not. Um, uh, recent games are ordered based on, um, well, time going this way. Uh, Upcoming games, uh, the one that's closest to you time-wise is the one that's at the top of the list, so you read that one down as well. Um, so it's, it makes it a lot clearer to quickly see what's happening or not. Yeah. The previous design that we had was um, it would load an entire list, including all the upcoming games, and if you toggle a switch, it would then trim those out. It wasn't necessarily obvious that there was two different sections, so now we've covered that part. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. All right. Oh. Yeah, we, we, we support baseball. Yeah, yeah, we definitely have index for that. So, the, like I said, we've got a relatively general model, but we, have, we are supporting a, a range of sports. I think about 10, last time I checked, things like beach volleyball, baseball, netball, hockey, field hockey, ice hockey, soccer, rugby, um, rugby so it's rugby union and rugby league. So there, there's definitely a range. And the updating of these games on the screen um, because I don't own this, this game when I took the screenshot. Um, there is a button that will say, change the status. So you can say, oh, it's, it's first intermission or second intermission. Or um, when I write in a comment, which is on the top right, it will give you a screen where you can also choose what kind of an update you would like to write about. So if you're saying, well, oh, this update is not just text, it's actually there was a try, or there was a penalty, or a yellow card, or a red card. That's all there, but if the sport of the game was different, like, for example, ice hockey, it would give you completely different updates. And these updates, again, are synchronized with the server. So if one day we say, ooh, um, we need to add a new sport, it's going to be tractor racing, um, we can just synchronize that with the app. The app will then save it in core data. And all the updates and statuses that come with that sport are in the app. So that way you can say, oh, I now want to create this different kind of sport. And the, the actions that you can take with it are different. And what you will see in the comments, it's not on this slide to say, it might be on a different slide. Um, I'm not going to bother look for it, I think. Nope, that's not it. Um, it will actually reflect what the update was. So it will say, ooh, there was a try or there was such and so. Yeah, coincidentally, I left this slide out. Hello. So far, this is all just conversation, but yeah, usually it just comes up in bold and it'll say there was a try or there was an action, yeah. Cool, uh, and uh, things like the location screen. So this is like a detailed screen of um, information associated with entities. We've got competitions, locations, users, teams, sports, that sort of stuff. For each of them, we present a whole bunch of information that you can scroll through. Uh, the location, um, like I said, is done with MapKit, so you can just tap on it, it'll take you to the Maps app, it'll give you all the directions. That's particularly useful if you have to go to a sports ground and, you know, these are usually in relatively obscure places because it's a local town. They usually know where it is, but if you're out of town, it's hard to find. So we're really putting local towns and local teams and local clubs all on the map. So, yeah. Um, other things that we support, which I didn't mention before, is that, like I said, teams have clubs. So there is quite a, a complicated structure behind the app that we are trying to simplify as much as possible. Um, from a team page, you can actually tap on... Um, uh, a link which will then take you to the club page and on the club page we can have things like sponsors and that sort of thing and then click on the sponsor link will take you to another website so it's another form of discrete advertisement that we can because um, clubs can actually take ownership of these teams and these clubs in the app because yeah I mean we allow people to freely create them but we also allow clubs to take ownership of them and control them and start streaming all their games through here we even have a special version of um, the desktop uh, that allows you to embed a whole list of streams into your website. So we, we are definitely expanding uh, places. Yeah. Cool. All right. 